Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on, saints. Shake it out of the atmosphere. Speak it into your life. Glory, glory. Glory, glory. Come on, there you go. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, scoot up. Come on, scoot on up. We ain't got you back there. Oh. Listen, grab the person hand beside you right quick and, and look them slap dab in the eye and shout, neighbor, you're going to make it. Come on, tell them again, you're going to make it. Tell them, how do you know I'm going to make it? Tell them, I'm going to help pull you out. Come on, I'm going to help pull you out. You ain't giving up. You ain't giving up or you ain't giving in. Come on, squeeze that hand a little bit and tell them, I'm going to help pull you out of this thing. The devil is alive. Abba! You ain't giving up at it. You ain't giving up. You ain't giving up. Shotatala Bahaba! Abba! Abba! Jesus, I know it's Wednesday night.
tomorrow. That's for somebody. Because he lives. Because he lives is the merit. All of my fear. Yeah, they are gone. Because I know. I know. I know. Who holds future. I know Brother Gary in here, maybe he'll like this one. Oh, amazing grace. Come on, there you go, scoot on it. How, how sweet the sound. Come on, sister, they hit me. That say a wretch like hang me I want what love Glory But now I am Hey, glory. I was blind. But right now. Hey. Right now I see. And they will sing something like this. Shine. On me. Ah! Come on. Throw your hands up. Shine. On me, let the light from the lighthouse shine on me. Hey, shine on me. Ah! Throw your hands up again. Shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me. Thank you. Come on, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, thank you. Thank you. Come on, saints, thank you. Lift your voice before we get into this lesson. Thank you. Come on, everybody, thank you. Come on, there you go. We thank you. We thank you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for what God is doing here at the Judah Worship Center. Come on, somebody. I'm thankful for what he's doing here at the Judah Worship Center. Surely the Lord has been good to us. 
I do I have one witness? He has been good to us. And I love him for that. Thank God for all of our leaders, amen, and elders and ministers. Give them a hand praise tonight. Come on, let's thank God. Amen. Thank God for our prayer warriors, amen, going forth. Give our intercessors a hand praise, amen. And thank God for those who are watching, by the way, of Facebook Live. Will you please, before we dive into this lesson for a little while, will you please help share this? Come on, just go to your page. If all of us in here will just share it. I hope it's no heathen. Please make sure the heathen is not on it here. Amen. Maybe because I got this sweater on. <clears throat> Let's make sure that we all are sharing and sharing and encouraging people to join our live amen a lot of our members amen some are out a little sick amen some little colds and stuff that's running around but that's all right we're gonna be uh just fine with that keisha if you wouldn't mind just go ahead and hit that one button that'll turn these fans on here amen so we thank god Amen for what God is doing in this place. Last but surely not least. Amen. Thank God for my lovely wife, Sister Vicky. I'm somewhat a little jealous. Amen. In a couple of days, the women are going to be having fun. Amen. At the women's, women's retreat. But next year, y'all ain't going to catch me off guard because I'm going to the same day y'all have y'all retreat. We, me ain't going to have us a retreat. We're going we're gonna to fix that. Amen. Amen. And amen. So we'll do a little mini thing. Amen. That Friday, we're going to chill out. Saturday morning, we're going to chill out. Amen. Come Sunday, y'all probably won't see none of us here. They say, so what? Amen. <laughs> they got us out number anyway. Amen. Amen. But I'm so happy that, and I want the women to support that. Amen. To that's a great vision to have. Amen. For women getting together. And I know sometimes you just need to get away. Amen. Get away from. Amen. The house. Amen. And uh, getting away from the husband. Amen. It's, uh, ain't nothing wrong with that. Amen. It's, Amen. <laughs> they want to get away from us sometime. I understand. Amen. Sometimes we can be so bossy, demanding. Amen. And some of us who don't have husbands just need to get away anyway. Just get away. Amen. See a new atmosphere. Is that right? Amen. Come on with me right quick. And we're going to just veer for a little while, but not too much of veer, but uh, what that would help the church. Amen. In the lesson, I want to encourage you every night. Um, let's show every Sunday morning. Let's show unity. That's that other word, solidarity. What they call it? Yeah. Let's show that by sitting close. You know, on Wednesday nights we have enough room for everybody in here, but let's show that it's it's more of a, a fervent in the spirit once we come together. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So let's practice that and let's keep that going. Is that right? All right. Luke chapter 13 um, uh, on tonight. And this word is here to help you, to encourage you. Amen. To encourage your heart. Amen. And I'm just, we're going to nib and dab on Sunday's lesson to encourage you to have the great understanding of Sunday's message. Amen. But all this week, we're, um, all this month, we're dealing and talking with about the word harvest. And understanding this, Sister Lowe, that in some seasons, you cannot plant. Some seasons, you need to pull up. Some season you need to store away. With that being said, before we go to Luke chapter 13, go ahead and get Ecclesiastes chapter 3. 
before you can see that for yourself. Because seasons are important. Thank God for Brother Thompson. Amen. Say amen from he's just a great musician. And we're missing his wife tonight. Amen. Make sure that she's not having the baby by herself. Amen. Appreciate it. Amen. You keep, keep check on them. Probably put a camera. Amen. Everywhere she go. Amen. Amen. She get by getting ready. Is that right? Amen. Amen. We're praying for him. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. But I want you to stay encouraged, brother preacher. You stay encouraged. Amen. Sometime in this new season, the enemy will do everything he, in his uh, power to make you abort what God done put in your hands. Amen. But you stay, stay focused. Stay focused with it. All right? Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And look at this. And we're going to get these things right. Amen. For night is over with. 3 and verse number 1. Turn me down to preacher. All right, what does it say? To everything there is a season and a time to every person. I'll get that. Get it real good. Good to see the Hill family back. To everything there's a what? Season. To everything there's a season. Love it, right? You want to love it? I'm behind. Okay, all right. All right. Father, that's right. All right. To everything there is a season. And a time to Now, I want you to see that. Everything. Everything. Now just get that in your mind real good, Tara. Get that in your mind. You hear me? You see me? Amen. You don't want to see me. <laughs> everything. There is a what? Not something. Everything, Mary. And sometimes you can be out of season. Now this is very important at El Night. And just now, I sure appreciate y'all. This is very important. I was went to pray, uh, Brother Mark, because I went to pray in Cameron uh, last week. And right when I knelt down to pray, the Lord spoke clearly to me. You know what the Lord told me? He said, what's bringing this extra stress to your mind and your soul is that you're holding on to one old season trying to reach for something new. Get that, Brother Drill. What's, cut it out, but they make sure they hear me real good. You know, right now, um, um, Brother Bradeen, a lot of kids, you know, uh, my wife told me, well, look, we got this going on. Catching little colds, little sniffles. Say amen then. Mm -hmm. Nose running. If you understand that, Brother Dean, will trying to come out of the summer, enter into the fall. You know, I had to turn my little heater on last night. Hey, see, I got a little wood house. I got a little... It got a little chilly. Now, see, some of us so used to the heat, and it was some hot days. So we ain't ready to put on these long sleeves. No turtlenecks just yet. We're trying to hold on to the summer. And when we hold on to the summer, we dress light. And the weather done already changed, and what's done happened, our body and our mindset haven't changed, and next thing you know, we're catching a little sickness. Because we're not willing to let go of the summer, even though the fall is here. And next thing you know, your body starts getting sick. Start telling you that you need to, now, when you leave out of the house, I know you done took your little bath, but you need to cover your head up. So you thought you can just start waving your head and, you know, I'll go all back. Y'all ain't say that they walk out there and let it just dry. No, baby, you got to put some, uh, what they call a stocking cap on. <laughs> are, are you getting what I'm saying? Some of us are trying to hold on to something old that God has already closed the book on and it's a new season. To everything, there is a what? And what? A time to every purpose. 
Now, watch this. I'm, I'm gonna sh- let me s- make sure I make this real good to y'all and bring it just to the lowest common denominator there is. I made a statement last Sunday that I want you to understand. And a lot of people don't understand this because it's, I guess, dinosaur teaching. It's, it's actually biblical. It's old folk you teach, teach, but it's, it's the Bible. You would not get clear understanding of a new season until you fall in correct alignment with leadership. Leadership job, watch this now. A leadership job is to help maneuver you in and out of your season of your life. Okay, watch this. Brother Dean, we got another cold front coming through. Not a big one, but it's some some coming pretty soon. See, Brother Dean studies the weather. He's a meteorologist, actually. He is. He's not just too much of the tech man. He's a meteorologist. But that weatherman's job is to notify everybody how that weather's gonna be. The job of the leader is to help notify you. No, no, no. That ain't the right thing to do. Right? No, not this time. I see a storm going that way. A leader job, watch this now, is to give you understanding. Now, it's for your job not to receive the understanding. It's to give you understanding of times and seasons. Get that again. A leader job is to give you understanding of times and leaders. Now, put this down here right quick. Go to, uh, uh, I think, is it, is it first... Uh, Chronicles 12, I think it's 1 Chronicles 12 and 32. Look at that right quick. 1 Chronicles 12 and 32. Say amen, Brother Mark. Amen. I'm, my friends are so hyped me up for this Memphis thing, so y'all probably got to go a couple days. I'm going to talk to y'all. No people show hype me up. Yes, they will. Is that 1 Chron- Chronicles 12 and 32? Y'all see this? Yes, sir. Now, now, now get this. You got it, Brother Dean? Get, you, got, you got it up there? And the children of Israel. Now, hold on. Let, let, let him get up there to the top. Right there. <clears throat> Let's pray. We're going to be praying for Sister Whitfield's father. Uh, they had the air flight into Dallas. Uh, third degree burn somewhere. So let's pray for him. Amen. Amen. The children of Issachar, watch this, were men... That had what? Understanding. Let's start right there. They had what? Understanding. They had understanding. Now, I want you to see this. <clears throat> Brother Haynes know how to cut hair. One time I said, man, he was cutting my hair. I said, why are you cutting my hair like in a, a, a mushroom shape? <laughs> <laughs> like he was going in a circle. I said, hey, man, I don't do my hair like that. <laughs> Like a mushroom, a half of a moon. You remember that? Now, 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 I didn't know that he was doing the right thing because I thought for sure he said, Man, I said, said, Man, he ain't doing the right thing until another person done the same thing. He told me, Now, this is what Haynes told me. He said, In order to get that uh, afro shape, you got to cut it this way, like a half balloon, like that. Until another barber told me the same thing. He said, this is how your hair fall for men. Now, I thought for sure I was going to look like a duck after he cut my hair. (laughs) But the reason he done that, he had understanding. understanding. See, some things you won't understand Mm -hmm. because you haven't been taught and trained in that area. Are you getting that? A teacher had to tell Brother Haynes that he, he learned it in his barber school. And other barbers learned the same thing. Are you hearing? But somebody had to teach him. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
These men had understanding of what? Times and to know what Israel ought to do. The job of a leader, watch this now, the job of a pastor, not just show you times, but the job of a pastor is found in Jeremiah 3.15. Come on, preacher, put it up there quick, fast. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get through with this thing. I hope you're just getting this right quick. It's going to be fast. Say amen, Ebony. You got it, Brother Dean? Look at the job of this pastor. Well, look what God done for pastors. He got up there. Read it, brother preacher. It's, it's going to move it slow. Read it. <laughs> Jeremiah 3. You oh, you're waiting for the thing, too. Come on. There you go. I, I will what? Give you pastors according I will, to come my on. heart. Everybody say what? I will give you what? Pastors according to my heart, which what? shall feed you with knowledge, knowledge and, what? and understanding. So the job, my job is to give you knowledge yes. and understanding. You, are you getting that? So when you have understanding, you can tell, man, this is not the season right. that God has for my life. Right. I'm in something that I wasn't so, supposed to be in. Yes, That's the purpose of that when you get that word on Sunday morning. is to open your understanding. Jesus. You know, sometimes you can be on something. Watch this. And you can write this down. Maybe it's, you'll read it one day when you go look at your notes sometime. God will allow things to happen in your life, but it don't have to be the will of God. Ooh, God had opened this door. Yes, the door probably came open, but was that the will of God? And the only way that you have that, watch this, the only way that you get that, Sister Man, is understanding the will. If somebody feeding you the understanding. Now, I don't care what all of these other uh, type of people who are on Facebook or trying to diminish the office of a pastor. That is a godly office. Okay. Let's, lay, let's, let's get it. Let's get it right quick. I'm going to show you. Go to Ephesians. Is this all right? And if it ain't all right, just say, Reverend, it ain't all right. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. Oh, hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. All right. Well, so, y'all, everybody got it? Everybody got it? Say amen to you have it. Amen. Verse number eight. What, what does it say? Wherefore he said, uh -huh. when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended. Now he gave gift unto men. Read on. What is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Uh -huh. He that descended is the same also that Who ascended. ascended up far above all heavens, uh -huh. that he might feel all things. Uh -huh. And he gave some now, apostles. Now, now, hold up. He only gave some. Everybody's not all walking in the apostolic anointing. And you know what? I, I, I need to take, and please, Ella Garden again, in November, I'm gonna, I want to break that, just to go and dig into the apostolic anointing. Yes, sir. Because every church don't operate in the apostolic anointing. Now, you, we are just blessed to have an apostolic anointing. Yes, sir. Yes, That's sir. why we build so much. Yes, sir. That's right. think, about, think about how many churches you went to that build like we build. Yes, right. You know, I rode by the building yesterday. I said, Lord, I thank you for allowing this building to be up. Yes, this was something that was thrown in my spirit. <laughs> now it's up. Think about that. We were just doing a telecast. Had some little fake coffee mugs and, you know, <laughs> where I take where that we got from the rental center place. <laughs> and has, had a little couch over there, you know what I'm saying? Asked if you would donate a <laughs> Had a little phone bank over there and everything. That building's up. Yeah. <laughs> Say amen, somebody. Now, we done done more since you done seen us at the hill. We done got the face on it, the doors on it, everything, and the bathrooms all up. Everything is up. 
this is something that you need to see that God has given us an apostolic anointing to have a vision and it comes to pass that fast. That's right. He gave some what? Apostles. Next one. Some prophets. Some what? Some evangelists. Some prophets. And you just thank God that we have we have a prophetic ministry in here. I mean, just, just a prophetic ministry in the house. Amen. And a lot of folks come to the church, they start prophesying. I said, man, they start prophesying in the church. We don't, what else? Some evangelists. We got, we got some evangelists. We got some people here, they're ready to tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> they're ready. I mean, it's got a fire on them. It's a, man, I, something just lit me up. I'm ready to go for it. Because that's this the gift is in this house. It is. And when you come into a house that motivates you to work, you at the right house. When you come to the house, you just ready to say, baby, I'm just, just coming to be coming. That ain't nothing. You, don't, you want something that's going to have a drive. Amen, somebody. And not only that, you come to a house, you want to come to a house where you are apt to be corrected to. Right. Amen. You know, I told my superintendent, he's, he's probably watching. Uh, he's a, my boss at school. And, you know, just, just deal me right. Just deal me right. You know. And he texted me one time and said, he said, Pastor, uh, the national anthem, th that wasn't the best. It was the best sound. It didn't sound too good. Well, I needed that. No, don't lie to him and say, ooh, that band sounded good. <laughs> you know, you ought to, and when he told me that, so then you know what I did? That next following day, I said, y'all get y'all music out. We're going to play this thing a hundred times. Make sure y'all know your notes. Because we're going to show them that we can play this music. See, so you ought to want to be corrected. You don't want to grow in error. You want to be in a ministry that's going to correct you. Because you don't want to go out there looking ashamed. What church you with? Judah. I'm with Judah. And I know Psalms 23. The Lord said, get what you want. <laughs> well, who your pastor again? <laughs> Yeah, I know it. I know it. I know. I know. Jesus laughed. What? <laughs> I mean, Jesus wept. Come on. Now. Yeah, Pastor Beach, my pastor. He told me. Yeah, he told me. Yeah, he told me. He told me. <laughs> no, I ain't just. So you ought to want to be somewhere that somebody's going to correct you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen, somebody. Yes, sir. Come on. He gives some what? Some pastors. Renown. And teachers. Renown. For the perfecting of the saints. Hold up. Now get that. Get that. Please get this. Won't you get this? When you have understanding, it perfects you. Mm -hmm. Help me, Lord. When you don't have understanding, you'll walk in error. Right. All right. Understanding brings perfection. I really learned something today, Sister Mary. I learned something. And we went to the band competition. Brother Marcus, we went today. And actually, just like a, I feel like I'm 100 pounds lighter since that competition over with. <laughs> but I went to the competition, and I learned something. The kids done their best. Actually, they did. They did their best marching today. But I learned this tonight, that if you allow somebody to practice something so long wrong, they would think wrong is right. And when you get to try to correct it, it's hard to correct what somebody has done so long. And I told one person, they said, well, we, we need to do this. I said, listen. Today is a competition. Just keep doing what you're doing. Because <laughs> you can't correct it at the competition. I said, you should try to correct that. We've been to get on the field. You need to correct whenever you see error corrected now. Because mm. not you begin to think that what you're doing is perfection. You know, you can keep doing error and error so long, you'll think that, man, I'm corrected. But it's not. 
It says, for the perfecting of the who? Saints. For the what? For the perfecting. The of the saints. God gives the gifts for the people for they can be perfected. Amen, somebody. Now, we did all of that to get to Luke chapter 13. Hey, give me 15 minutes and we'll be through. I'm over my time again. Luke 13. So I, I wanted to let you know about seasons to understand season that um, follow leadership helps you understand the season that you're in. And I don't want you to think that the season is just cold, hot, and, you know, uh, the leaves fall. Don't think of those seasons. Think of times of life. You know, I'm starting to understand too, Vicky. Every 10 years, you know, I'm uh, reading up on stuff, a person's bodies change. You know, so think of some seasons of mentality. And we'll jump more into that too. Luke 13. Come on, y'all. There were present at the seat. At the season, some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Uh -huh. And Jesus answering said unto them, uh -huh. Suppose ye that the Galileans were sinners uh -huh. above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things. Uh -huh. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, uh -huh. ye shall likewise perish. Sister God, are you still with my uh, social media audience? You have not? Thank you. All right, go ahead. Or these 18 upon whom... The tower of Siloam fell uh -huh. and slew them. Uh -huh. Think ye that they were sinners above all men uh -huh. that dwelt in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. Now, now I want you to understand that word repent here. Um, you need to have a change of thinking. Change of mindset. You know, I, I'm always um, referring back, and I know my students are tired of hearing this. But Sister Mary, I, I, I told them I brought some old pictures from some old band members who made a one. I told them, I said, the only thing that's different from them to y'all, they had a different mindset. See, a lot of times we fail because we fail to change our thinking. We fail to, see, you think, well, baby, I only have that much money and, and, and I ain't giving no more. That's a mindset. Well, uh, uh, I'm going to always be single. That's a mindset. Uh, baby, I'm going to be broke. That's a mindset. You have to start speaking this out in order to change what your mind think. I'm going to say that again. You need to start speaking positive out to change what your mind think. You need to train your heart to believe better. Train your heart. Man, I'm going to be prosperous. And the way you train this is by what you say. Just start speaking that every day. Oh, my, this is going to be a great day for me. Some, some great things are about to happen in my life. I'm training. Come on, read on what it say. And he spake a parable to you. And he spake also this parable. Uh -huh. A certain man had a fig tree. Planted in his vineyard. Now I want you to catch, catch this parable right quick. And he came and sought fig thereon, uh -huh. fruit uh -huh. thereon, uh -huh. and found none. He found none. And he said unto the dresser of the vineyard, uh -huh. Behold, these three years uh -huh. I come seeking fruit on this fig tree uh -huh. and find none. Uh -huh. Cut it down while I cumbereth it the ground. Then watch this. So the vicar, three years and found none. Cut it down. Now, Sister April, this is October, and we're in the middle of the month because I get paid next week, tomorrow. I can tell it. You see me? <laughs> you only got two more months in this year. Ask yourself, have you been a productive member of the kingdom this year? Have you been working evangelism for the kingdom? Have you been given to the poor? Have you visited the sick and shut in? What have you done for kingdom? Think about it. Now, I know that you've been getting more education 
and you've been getting more hair, and you've been getting more nails, and get your nails done every other week. I know that. You know, you're tired of getting your stuff, all that stuff done, and, you know, this and this done. And, you know, you pay your rent. All, you know, you good. You know, you're making more money. Ooh, go on, girl. You got that going. But what have you done for the kingdom? What if God says, have you considered my servant Job. I'm just not talking about for the test, but have God considered you for anything? Think about this. Maybe God is just not even allowing the season to come to you because he hasn't considered you even to be a servant. Think about that. Three years, this tree ain't done nothing, haven't produced nothing. Now, I'm not asking you to raise your hand for what you have done for the kingdom. I'm not asking you to do that. Because, we listen, I'm, I'm in the pulpit. Come on now. I'm, if I have to jump up here, I jump up here. But just let me stand against it. <laughs> From the pulpit to the back door. All of us in here can do much better. Now, Ella Gardner, I'm really hard on myself. You could ask my wife. I listen to my messages. I, and my, my wife is my best critic. Baby, you could have said that a little bit better. You could have softened your tone on that. She tell me all the time, now, can I tell you, when you get the hooping, don't you do just take that out of it. <laughs> like, like I, like she want me to say, ah, ah. It's hard to do, but <laughs> you see what I'm saying. But <laughs> she tell me some Sunday morning, hey, just teach, baby. Don't I do all that yelling? I can take that from her. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? All of us in here has much work to do. And we can do more. I, I told my wife, I said, baby, I said, I, I need to get off of this if I can do more. Because we all, I don't want to be called guilty in front of the Lord said, uh, Beecham, in 2022, you didn't do nothing. Think about that. They're going to open up the books of life on us. All right, um, so the alcohols, let's see. Uh, all right, last Sunday you came in late a couple times. Uh, and you, did you know what church sound? <laughs> I hope it don't be like <laughs> But think about that. What have we done for kingdom? What have we done for kingdom? And God said, you know what? Give him another chance. Now, this, this is what this parable is about. Look what the parable is about again. He said, let's cut this tree down. This tree ain't bearing no fruit. This tree ain't winning no souls. They ain't helping nobody but about themselves. Let's cut it down. Come on, Elgar. Why covereth it the ground? Why covereth it the ground? Verse number eight. And Everybody look at verse number eight. Said he answered, said what? Lord. Let it alone this year. Let it alone this year. Also, till I shall dig about it. I'm, listen, and this and one, well, hold it. up. I'm going to dig around it. There are some stuff that's hindering your growth. Now, listen. Now, if I'm the shepherd, I'm telling you. If, if God has made me the under shepherd here, I'm telling you what's hindering your season. What's hindering your season my God, and, and thank God for my friend coming down next Tuesday. Y'all help support. I just put on the service, but I know he's my friend. He's coming down next Tuesday to help us out. What's hindering your season is some people don't understand the office that God has put people in. And all you have to do is stay connected. Stay connected. Pastor Benson told us this. i never forget um, uh, Darrell's grandfather. He said, y'all, go out there and get your new car. I said, well, I ain't got bad credit. Go get the new car. I got bad credit. So everybody in the church, go get your new car. Boom. Mrs. Vick, we got a new car. He 
You told everybody, church, go get you a new house. People was getting houses, and I just didn't have the faith at the time to get a house. And they offered me that job. I said, Pastor Benson. I said, Pastor Benson. I said, Susan Benson. I said, I don't know I'd be no band director. I said, I can't take that job. He had a big old fat ring on one of his fingers and slapped me on my shoulder. Pow. He said, whoever God calls, he qualifies. When he said that, it's like, it's like, well, like I turned into Superman. Now, the way he taught on Wednesday night, the way Pastor Ben taught on Wednesday night, he, uh, he didn't wear no robe. He had like a doctor's jacket. A white doctor's jacket. Y'all remember that? A white barbershop doctor. And it was always creased, always nice and clean. That's how he talked. He would say something like that. Woohoo! Woohoo! When he told me that, I believed him. See, your thing is, you don't have to worry about what comes out of the man's pocket. What comes out of a man of God's mouth. And when it hits your spirit, that can happen to your new season right there. All you have to do is believe it. Amen, somebody. That opens up your new season right there. When Jesus told that man at the pool for 38 years, he said, get up, rise, take up your bed and walk. In other words, he was saying, this is your new season. I'm the season holder. I hold the season in my hand. And I just brought the whole season for you. Get up. Walk. And when he heard it, and walked in this new season. See, the problem people, my God, they have a disconnect of what the leader said to the people. All you have to do is stay connected and believe. God will download to the man of God what to say to you at the right time. See, God ain't going to let his people go crazy. He'll kill that preacher for you. Oh, for real. He said, don't let it alone. Did this dig the stuff around. Dig. There's some stuff around it. And if it bears there, fruit. There, oh, hold it. That's, I'm, I'm almost through. There's some stuff around it. That when they get out from it, there's some people can get in your ears and hinder your season. There's some relationships that will hinder your season. You know, Elder Lane, I said this myself in my mind. I can't allow nothing, anybody, to hinder my season. And I'm going to say this, and I'm come to a close. Just give me five minutes. Give five minutes. I'm going to say it's going to come to a close to thinking. When Jesus told that man, he said, go, take your bed and walk. When Jesus saw him the next time, guess where he saw him at? Can I tell you? Who said it? Where he saw him at? In the church. Because it's in church where you can get your season taken away. And guess who can do it? Church people. When Jesus saw him in the temple, guess what he told him? Don't you go back and sin again. A worse thing is coming to you if you go do it again. You would think Jesus would say, hey, man, you're doing good, ain't you? Look at you walking now. Oh, you're doing good. No, Jesus gave him warning of him losing his new season. And he gave him warning in church. See, it's so, it's so easy to get a season on a Sunday and lose it right there in the church. Because seasons are issued out by the man of God. Good God. Oh, I wish somebody, watch this, just read real fast. He said, he said dig it out and do what? Done it. Done it. Done is fertilizer. In other things, it stinks. Cow manure. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Y'all ain't never been to the country. Y'all ever took a little cow manure around there and turned around some of y'all plants? 
Look at all these. Uh, look at all these two goody shoes. Saints around here. <laughs> they never had no cabinet around there. Amen. Amen. You put some of that cabinet about them flowers that show grow up. Y'all. <laughs> Listen. Now, I want you to get this, Sister Landrum. If nobody else get it, Sister Hill, y'all get this. He said, dig around it and put some stanky stuff around it. Some of you around some stanky attitude people. But they are around you on purpose to help grow you. <laughs> I mean, it's got some bad, they, they roll their eyes. Do you bad? I guess I got the wrong church. <laughs> and you wonder why they won't leave the church? <laughs> they are around. You know, one time, now, 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 this is me and my wife. I'm going to let y'all in to our conversation, and, and I'm going to close the door. <laughs> I'm going to let you in just real fast. I'm going to close the door. You know, me and my wife, that's, I think that's like 80% of our conversations is about the church, right? And... One time, man, big, we just, I think it was Sunday night, we were sitting on the couch, just, just talking. I said, Lord, why do we have to deal with so many disobedient saints? Were we disobedient when we was going up on somebody? Did we sow that? And me and my wife started thinking the back, you know, we didn't sow none of that. But if we think about it now, Sister Vicki, God bless us with stinky attitude people to grow. <laughs> just to grow us. Just elbow somebody tell, I'm growing, I'm growing. <laughs> I'm growing. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to stop there, but listen. <laughs> Would you go home? Will you please go home and read verses 10 through 17 for me? Let's go home and read that, okay? Yes, sir. And you'll see more about that. Clap your hands and give God some praise. Amen tonight. Amen. I thank God for those who have have watched with us, amen, on Facebook Live. Amen. Those who want to give tonight, I know some of the members, you're on Facebook Live, and I'm going to go back and check it. Amen. I want you right now to say, Pastor, I'm giving. Come on, I'm talking to you, amen. Brother Kadeen, I'm talking to Sister Blackman. Amen. I know that you called in and said you weren't going to make it. I'm talking to Sister Brenda. I want you to go ahead and give that Wednesday night offering. God bless you. We love you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Dean. Amen. Tonight, amen, let us be a blessing to our church. Amen. I thank God for our visitor. Amen. On tonight. Give her.